Hello, how are you? Hello, good evening. Good evening. Fine, and you? I'm excellent. What's your name? Brigitte. Bridget. Okay, Bridget. Tell me about yourself. With Tell me about yourself. What do you well, do? How are you? Fine. Excellent. Okay. Good. But what what do you do, Bridget? Example. Example. Hi. My name is Edwin. I am 44 years old. I have been married for 20 years. I have three children and two grandchildren. I am a grandfather and I live in Santa Tecla. I learned English many years ago and I work with Inglés Cooperativo for three years. In this course, I'm going to be your teacher. Nice to meet you. Uh, great. great. Hey, Bridget, tell us about yourself. Uh, my name is Brigitte. I live in Soyapango. Mm. I have three, four, four, four sons. Mm. Four boys. Mm. Two, two boys, two children, two, two girls. Okay, so no four boys. I have four children. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, how do you say adolescent? Ah, teenagers. Mm -hmm. y tú, y tú, a, adults. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eh, I, I, I live um, sí. eh, how do you say cerca? Near. <laughs> Near eh, uh, so my father, my mother. Okay. Um, I I I will not not work. Um, only. Okay. Good. Thank you very much, Bridget. Nice. Okay. Good. Anybody else would like to introduce themselves? Me, teacher. Me? Please. Oh. Go ahead, Elvis, and then the next person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. My name is Elvis. I live in Chalatenango. I am 39 years old. Um, and I, I, I have a daughter. She is seven years old, and I work in a barber shop, my own barber shop. Uh, and and I married with Karen Natalie. She is my wife. Um, and in, in this moment, I have a favor. <laughs> Thirty nine grades. But uh, I'm here because uh, I I want uh, learning English. That's it. Nice to meet you, Elvis. Good. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, me. Jose? Yeah. Um, nice to see you again, teacher. Nice to see you. Um, well, I'm Jose Arturo Ramirez Bernal. I'm from Santa Ana. Um, 39 years old. I'm a um, technician in air conditioners. Um, currently, I, I, I work here in Morazan. And um, I have two kids, but they live with her mom with their mom in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, and I was uh, studying English 
um, around one, one and a half a year. And that's it. Okay, okay. How old are your children? Uh, my daughter is uh, 16. Mm -hmm. and, and my and my son, 12. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Me, teacher. Okay. Nice to meet you too, teacher. Este, good evening, every boy. And my name is Dina Flores. Uh, I am from San Salvador. I am a 30 years old. Uh, I work in administration. And I don't children. Mm, only that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I live with a mom and sister. Okay, great. Well, nice to meet you. Good. Is good. Who is next? Nice. Anybody else? Me? Good evening. Good evening. You, Carla. You. Okay, thank you. Uh, I am Carla. I have 30 years old. Uh, I live with my parents, uh, with my brother, and I have a cat. Mm, I live in Santa Ana, and right now I'm not working, but I hope very soon to find something that I can really enjoy. And mm. just that. Okay, good. Very nice. I see many people from Santa Ana. All right. Mm -hmm. Is my. Okay. My name is Cesar Alexander Ramirez. Uh, I live in Santa Ana. I own. Uh, I live alone. Um, I work in the university, the university, University of Angelica del Salvador. Um, I am forty-three year old. Is uh, um, my come on. My play is um, I swimming every day. Yeah. That's it. And what do you? I am do? only. Um, uh, I have a uh, a a song. One song. Okay. Is a, and what do you do at the university? Is uh, administrative. Okay. Good. You work in the office, huh? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Great. That's it? That's it. Okay, excellent. Well, I'm so happy to have so many people in the class. It's wonderful. As I mentioned at the beginning, my name is Edwin, and I'm going to be with you for this module. I'm your teacher. Um, I have worked for Inglés Cooperativo for three years. I have a degree in business administration. I have a teaching degree. I have worked for more than 20 years as a teacher. I work with NGOs, USAID. I worked in different schools and academies like Escuela Americana El Salvador, Escuela Britannica, and other private schools as well, Augusto Walter and other places. But now I like to work a few hours a day with INSA4. And together, I'm going to help you to improve your English. The important is that in this level, the objective is to get you to speak more, for you to practice more speaking and to get you to feel more comfortable with English, right? Because only one more level and then you go to advance. So the idea is also the same, if the same as the other levels, minimum 80. You want to have 80 in your activities in order to pass and to receive the diploma. In this place, we are going to have five sections. This week and next week, we're going to complete three sections. Section one, two, and three, and the exam. Then next week, Thursday, the midterm. And then we're going to have 
section four and five, and the final exam. Okay. If you want to see your grades, you click on Pro Progreso, and there you can take a look at all your grades, and you can have all of the activities that you need. For each section, you can find how many points you have and your score, okay, including the exam. The objective is to have 80 or more to pass with no problems. It's okay. Any questions? Uh, all clear, teacher. All clear. Okay. Okay. Good. okay. okay. Perfect. In this module, we are we are going to have two Fridays that we have class. Two Fridays we have class. Why? Because May 1st, no class. And May 10th, no class. So for us, okay. the class is going to finish May 12th. May 12th is the last day of the course. It's a Friday. Friday, May 12th. Yes? Yes. Okay, good. Now, how do you have your grades in each section? You have many activities. The grades are here in the knowledge check. It's like the little notebook with a pen. These are obligations to complete. It's necessary in order for you to pass the level to complete. Okay. Today, we're going to begin with unit one and advance and see how we do. But first, any questions, any comments that you would like to ask or did you would like to know before we begin our course? Okay. I have a question. Yes. Yeah. My name is Dulce. It's a pleasure to meet you to everyone. And I have a question. In my case, my uh, my uh, email it's changed and i can't uh, check in my 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 information and it's no problem about uh, the first class no no puedo entrar pues a la plataforma no problem but remember to send an email to send a whatsapp to give contact to give you the correct e to give the correct email address, okay? I, okay, I I did I I do the, the change um by phone with Jimmy. Okay. But I know why it's no it's not working for today. Okay. But so, I, I I try tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. exactly. Tomorrow, call Jimmy and check. Maybe what it takes the time for update to update the system. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions or comments? No? No, teacher. Okay, perfect. We are going to watch the small video from Inta Ford, and then we begin our class. El Inza Ford ha trabajado con un alto nivel de profesionalismo, pensando siempre en incrementar las posibilidades de crecimiento para la gente de nuestro país. Nos hemos dedicado a que a través de la formación se generen oportunidades para los salvadoreños y así cada vez más, en un mundo más competitivo y globalizado, siempre existan en nuestro país posibilidades de superación para todos. Miles de hombres y mujeres han logrado desarrollarse profesionalmente y han ampliado sus conocimientos y posibilidades laborales a través de los diferentes programas de formación que son parte del sistema de formación profesional, el cual ofrece programas de formación para todos los niveles de recurso humano dentro de una empresa. Se ha incrementado productividad de muchas industrias y cientos de empresas a través de la capacitación y formación de cientos de miles de salvadoreños con programas como Área Técnica, ofreciendo cursos técnicos para mejorar el desempeño operativo y tecnológico de los trabajadores. Competencias Gerenciales, con temas de capacitación para complementar y actualizar conocimientos para áreas de gerencia. Inglés para el Trabajo, 
Contenidos estandarizados del inglés para hacer a los trabajadores más eficientes y productivos en el desempeño de sus funciones. Mejora de competitividad de las MIPES. Amplios temas de capacitación, específicos para micro y pequeños empresarios. Cursos cerrados y abiertos, tratando temas de capacitación para trabajadores de las empresas cotizantes de Insaforp. Insaforp Online. Cursos online, con el horario y ubicación que más convenga al usuario para la constante capacitación en múltiples temas y profesiones. Trabajando con el compromiso claro de ayudar al desarrollo del país y con un equipo profesional entregado a buscar oportunidades para nuestra gente, es que Insaforp ha logrado tener un modelo de gobernanza y gestión ejemplar que tiene como base el diálogo permanente entre el sector empleador, laboral y el gobierno formando a los trabajadores, capacitando a la gente de nuestro país. Es que transformamos la vida de las familias salvadoreñas, porque en Insaport trabajamos todos los días sabiendo que, a través del conocimiento, es que estamos formando un mejor El Salvador. Con el objetivo de formar en igualdad el Instituto Salvadoreño de Formación Profesional INSAFOR, presentó en el año 2017 la Guía para la Prevención y Erradicación de la Discriminación contra las Mujeres en los Centros de Formación Fijos, donde se desarrollan programas permanentes de formación profesional del INSAFOR, cuya elaboración contó con el apoyo de la Organización Internacional del Trabajo, OIT, y su objetivo a largo plazo es contribuir a mejorar las condiciones y oportunidades de acceso y permanencia de las mujeres en los procesos de formación profesional sin discriminación de ningún tipo. La guía pretende poner a disposición de Insafor y de sus centros colaboradores un instrumento que les permita identificar, conocer, prevenir, atender y erradicar progresivamente cualquier discriminación por razones de género contra las mujeres. Posteriormente, el Instafor desarrolló un plan piloto de implementación de la guía en tres centros de formación fijos y es así como surgen cuatro instrumentos fundamentales para la aplicabilidad de la guía, siendo estos manual de convivencia, protocolo de atención en casos de bullying y acoso sexual, lineamientos para la comunicación de los programas de formación con lenguaje inclusivo no sexista y la guía metodológica para la prevención y erradicación de la discriminación contra las mujeres. Dichos documentos fueron elaborados con el enfoque de derechos humanos y de género, estableciendo medidas que garanticen relaciones de respeto, igualdad y equidad entre todas las personas que forman parte y conviven en los centros de formación profesional. De esta forma, el INSAFOR asume la igualdad de género como un principio transversal de trabajo, entregando a los centros de formación estas cuatro herramientas que complementan la guía para la prevención y erradicación de la discriminación contra las mujeres, a fin de que sean puestas en práctica en beneficio de las usuarias de la formación profesional. Insafor, formando en igualdad. Ok. Perfecto. Now we can begin. Any questions? No questions. All right, let's begin our introduction to this unit. Welcome, new course, new challenges. This is what we will do. We want you to watch a video. We'll call it an intro video. Everything to be learned in this section is practiced in it. We want you to watch it now and watch it at the end of the section and you will see you will understand it better. Enjoy. Norman, I've got to go to the hardware store. Room 12 really needs work. Room 12, yeah. We're expecting guests soon, so take care of them, okay? Guests, room 12. Thanks. Anybody there? Sorry. Hi. May I help you? 
Yes, we have reservations, Quincy, Ed, and Michelle, for two nights. Yes, Mr. Quincy, uh, you're in room 12. May I help you with your luggage? Oh, no, we're okay. We, we're just staying two nights. We don't have a lot of luggage. All right, well, I'll show you the way to your room. Follow me. Oh, watch that floorboard. It's loose. Be careful. Here's the temperature control. Press this button for air conditioning. This button to turn on the heat. Adjust the temperature with this dial. Bathroom's right in there. My name is Norman. Give me a call if you need anything. He was strange. He just got here and I'm already feeling stressed out. Hey, does it feel cold in here to you? Yeah. Hey, look. It's stuck. I'm gonna turn on the heat. This thing's broken. I'll call the front desk. Norman, we have a window that needs to be fixed and the heat needs to be checked too. Okay, thanks. He's on his way. That was nice of him. I still think he's strange. That was quick. <laughs> Hi. Hi. What's the problem? Oh, it's, it's cold. Turn up the heat. The heat doesn't work. Well, what's wrong with it? The dial's broken. It came off in my hand. Oh. That should do it. We'll see. That window needs fixing, too. It's stuck, and it's letting the cold air in. That should do it. Thanks. You're welcome. At least it's warming up. Yeah, but look around. The paint is cracked and peeling. The nightstand is scratched. The curtains are torn. And the rug is worn and dirty. Actually, this place is a dump. You know what? It's getting really warm in here. Norman didn't fix anything. He just turned the temperature way up, and now it's stuck on high. I can't turn the heat off. Well, open the window. I'm on it. There's no water in here. Ugh, and I can't open this window. That does it. We're leaving. Something the matter? Everything's the matter. First of all, the thermostat is broken. It's too hot now. And the window is stuck, and there's no water. Everything needs to be fixed. He's not strange. Strange? He's out of his mind. Woo! So many things that happen in that place. We're going to take a moment with our partners and discuss the video. What is going on? What happened with the couple? What are the problems that they faced? And what are some of the solutions that they present? Okay? Okay. Excellent. So just a few minutes with your partners. 
what happened in the video, what were the problems, what were the solutions, and what happened at the end. Hi, on the following video we will show you how to describe problems. We will do it in two ways, using past participles and using nouns. Stay and learn how. Describing Problems 1 With past participles as adjectives The jacket lining is torn The tabletop is damaged That vase is chipped my pants are stained. Her sunglasses are a little scratched. Their new aquarium is leaking. With nouns. It has a tear in it. There's a hole in it. There is some damage on the top. There is a chip in it. They have a stain on them. There are a few scratches on them. It has a leak in it. As we said in our intro video, we will show you two ways to describe problems. The two sets of sentences you're about to see have more or less the same meaning. We may say, something is torn or has a tear in it. As you noticed in our first sentence, we use past participle. This time again, acting as adjectives. This is the structure we will use. Subject plus B plus past participle as adjective. My dress is torn. The other way to describe a problem is to use nouns. In this case, we must use subject plus have plus noun. Or there is, there are plus noun. In a real sentence, this is how it would look like. My dress has a stain on it or there is a stain on it. Now you practice. Follow my example. My glasses are broken. Now you try, look at these following images and choose the past participle of these verbs. Type your examples on our discussion box.
Okay, great. Let's take a look here. What were some of the problems that you saw that they had in the hotel? What were some of the problems? The window didn't close well. Okay, good. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else? What there else? Was there was water. 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 Yeah. Any water. There wasn't any water, uh-huh. Yeah. Out window. Mm -hmm. The window, we mentioned the window, uh-huh. There was a problem with the window. What else? The the window couldn't open. Okay, the window couldn't open. Mm -hmm. The carpet was dirty. The carpet was dirty, excellent. The lamp doesn't turn on. Okay, the lamp didn't turn on, correct. The bed was noisy. Uh-huh, very noisy, uh-huh. There was not water. Correct, no water. The paint, how was the paint? The, the place is a dump. The place was a dump, exactly. So many, many problems. That is the objective of the unit. In this unit, we're going to learn how to describe problems. We're going to describe problems with past participles as adjectives and with nouns. Past participles are words with ed, right? For example, words that you use chipped, okay? Or words that we're going to find out in this moment from the video. Here we're going to learn many <coughs> different ways to describe problems. Hi, on the following video, we will show you how to describe problems. We will do it in two ways using past participles and using nouns. Stay and learn how. Describing problems one, with past participles as adjectives. The jacket lining is torn. The tabletop is damaged. That vase is chipped. My pants are stained. Her sunglasses are a little scratched. Their new aquarium is leaking. Okay. First, is all the vocabulary okay? Teacher, what's mm -hmm. the table stop? Table stop. The tabletop is um, the maybe in the kitchen. In the kitchen, do you have a little space for for cutting? And chopping, this is the tabletop. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, the other words are okay. All right, now we're going to see how to describe problems with nouns. Here, what is the difference? Look. With past participle, we use the verb to be, is, are. With nouns, we use many times the word with has, or there is, or there are. These are the other way. We can use there is, there are, or has, or have. With nouns, it has a tear in it. There's a hole in it. There is some damage on the top. There is a chip in it. They have a stain on them. There are a few scratches on them. It has a leak in it. As we said in our intro video, we will show you two ways to describe problems. The two sets of sentences you're about to see have more or less the same meaning. We may say, something is torn or has a tear in it. As you noticed in our first sentence, we use past participle. 
this time again acting as adjectives. This is the structure we will use. Subject plus B plus past participle as adjective. My dress is torn. The other way to describe a problem is to use nouns. In this case, we must use subject plus have plus noun or there is, there are plus noun. In a real sentence, this is how it would look like. My dress has a stain on it. Or there is a stain on it. Now you practice. Follow my example. My glasses are broken. Now you try. Look at these following images and choose the past participle of these verbs. Type your examples on our discussion box. Okay. Here we have many different. We're going to try together first to make sure that it's clear. Here, this is a mug. What is wrong with the mug? It's broken. Okay. What is the verb that they have here? Yeah. The, the, the mug is cheap. Cheap. Good. Remember, past participle is not correct. Present tense chip in the past chip. is with ed correct chipped. Okay. Uh -huh. So the mug with is e chipped with chipped. e and e. with ed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the sound is t. Correct. The sound is t. So, for example, the sentence would be like in the chat: the mug is sorry chipped. Because chipped is the past participle. Now, how do we use the same sentence with nouns? The mug has a chip. Excellent, has a chip. Very good. And with there is, Chip. There is a chip in it. Okay. In it or on the mug. Okay. So here we're gonna pick there is a chip on on the mug. There you go. This is the idea. You want to have three. The mug is chipped, the mug has a chip. And there is a chip on the mug. You want to be able to say the three different things. Here, take a look. We have a little discussion box. No in the chat, but here in the platform 1.1. I'm going to give you two minutes and I want you to give me the six sentences. Just like in the chat, right? Like here. You want three sentences for number two. Sorry, three sentences for a pair of jeans and three sentences for a CD. Okay, so you're going to do three for a pair of jeans and three of a CD here. All you're going to do is click Añade una publicación and write down the six sentences that we want. For this, I'm going to give you opportunity with your partner to make sure that it's correct with you and your partners. Only a few minutes because we don't need a lot of time because we already have the ideas. Okay.
mejor. Ya pudieron regresar. Ok, let's take a look. All right, Dulce. Yeah. I was just... I'm sorry. Uh -huh. But, but the, the, not working for me, the, the, the meeting. The, the internet or what? No, no. Um, the Zoom, eh, la sala, cuando reparte a sala. Ajá, está teniendo problemas. Ahí, ahí me dejó trabada, no me asignó ninguna sala. Ajá, es que estás... Entonces, no, Ajá. No tuve con quién comentar el video, pero sí lo vi bien. Ok, ok. Vamos a ver ahorita, Dulce, solo para okay. ver si, si te funciona bien. Te voy a asignar una sala. Ok, thank you. Ajá. Uh -huh. Okay, any questions? No, let me check. Let's take a look, 1.1. One one. Mm. No veo que ninguna persona haya puesto las oraciones. What happened, what happened? Ni una sola persona. I was writing the, the answers, teacher. Okay, all right. Finish writing the answers. Finish writing the answers. If not finished, you finish for homework. And then we check tomorrow. Because I see nobody, nobody put. Not one. Let's take. Uh-huh, nobody. All right. Let's see if we have the idea. Maybe we need a little bit of more practice to make sure that it's clear. It's okay. Here we're going to practice in 1.2. And we have 1.3 that is listening. The first part is 1.2. We're going to use today's grammar, okay? And we're going to write sentences with the past participle, right? Or with the nouns, like the example that we practice. Here we have six sentences. Let's try number one, okay? The tablecloth isn't very clean, okay? How can we say it? It is stained. Okay, there you go. It is stained. Very nice. Another form? It is stained on it. It has, has a stain. Correct. It has a stain. Correct. Or it has a stain on it. That's exactly it. Okay, let's try number two. Let's try number two together. 
Who would like to try number two? Is leaking. He's leaking. Okay. Is leaking. Good. Because leaking, no ED, is exception. Leaking only with ING. Very nice. What about number three? Scratch. Okay. The wood. Scratch. Oh, we are missing one word. The word uh, is? Correct. Always the verb to be. Always the verb is. to be. Is scratched. Good. What about number four? Has a tear in it. Has a tear. Okay. Has a tear. Okay. Has a tear. Very good. Okay. What about number five? It's chipped. Good. Pronunciation? Chipped. Chip. 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 With T. With T. Chipped. Chipped. Good. Number six? Mm. It's damaged. It's damaged. Excellent. Ya lo soplaron. Excellent. <laughs> it's damaged. Excellent. I like it. I like it. Don't worry. Nadie escuchó. All right. So let's All take right. a look. Let's take a look. <laughs> Here, you can put many different ways. Look, like in the example. It's stained, it is stained, it has a stain, it has a stain on it. You can see there are many different ways to complete it. The same for the others. But all of them here, oh, has a tear is correct also. Or you can use has a tear on it or the verb to be and the past participle is torn. All of those are okay? It's okay. Good. Very good. Now we're going to do the listening exercise. Here we have a little bit of listening. Let's take a look at the instructions. Santiago, can you please read the instructions? Yes, teacher. Listen to three customer return and eaten they push. For each customer, you need to write the, the eaten, the problem and if the store will be exchanged, exchanged. The time don't worry about capital letter. On punctuation, you may write just the word. Good. Only the pronunciation, Santiago. Purchased. 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 Purchase. An item. Item. Very good. Thank so you. we're going to listen. Number one, what is the item? What is the problem? And then if the store exchange or don't exchange it, right? Number two, the item, the problem, the topic, the problem, and if the store exchanges it or no. The same thing for number three. Correct. Okay. So we have three things. Yeah. I think, don't worry here, it's a misspelling, it's supposed to be a G, exchange. Okay, are we ready? So yes, remember, yes. three things, yes. the yes. item, if the store exchange it, and the problem. So item, problem, if they exchange it or not. Listen to three customers return an item they purchased. What's the problem? Take notes. Then complete the chart. One. 
Can I help you? Yes, I bought this briefcase here last week, but there's something wrong with the lock. I can't get it to close properly. Let me see. Yes, I see what you mean. The lock seems to be jammed or something. No problem, I'll get you another one. Sorry about that. Two. Excuse me. Yes? I wonder if you could take a look at these shoes I bought here. They're pretty new, but they seem to be falling apart. Hmm, let me see. Yes, this doesn't look right. The stitching is coming out. How long did you say you've had them? Only about a month. Here's the receipt. Hmm, yes. Well, let me exchange these for you. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Three. Excuse me. Yes, how can I help you? You see this shirt? I bought it here a few weeks ago, but the first time I washed it, the color changed. It went from bright red to light pink. How did you wash it? Well, I just tossed it into the washing machine with my other clothes. What temperature did you use? I usually wash my clothes in hot water, so I guess hot. Well, did you check the washing instructions? Um, maybe not. Well, you see here on this label, it says wash in cold water only. Uh-huh. So I'm really sorry, but since you didn't follow the washing instructions, I can't really do anything for you. Hmm. So we have quite a bit of information, right? What do you think was number one? Or do we listen again? Briefcase. Hmm. Briefcase. Okay, number one was a briefcase. And what is the problem? Lock doesn't work. Okay. I think someone there, hang on. What about, here, let me try this one and share again. <laughs> okay. What about one point two? Would the store exchange it? Yes. Hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. What about item number two? What was item number two? Shoes. 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 And what was the problem with the shoes? Falling apart. Falling apart. And is the store going to exchange them? Yes. 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 Okay. And what was the last one? Number three. A shirt. shirt. A shirt. A shirt. A t-shirt, specifically a t-shirt, okay. And what was the problem? The color change. Color change. And is the store going to exchange it? No. <clears throat> oh, one no, right? Okay. Let's take a look. Number one, correct. Briefcase, exactly. And the lock doesn't work, and yes. Number two, shoes. Great falling apart, and yes, the store will exchange. Number three, a shirt. Oh, they say a shirt, not a t-shirt. A shirt. And the color changed. Then, of course, they're going to exchange it. They're not going to exchange it, sorry. Okay? So, any questions? Um, I need a help on exercise one. 1.2. I write and, and, and the answer is wrong. Which one? Um, the first one. Did you what did you put? Um is staying. Okay. Mm -hmm. It should be correct, but I will show you again the answers that we checked. Do you have to put? Here are the four options. It is stained or it is stained, no contraction, it's, it has a stain or it has a stain on it. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, right. Maybe you forgot a period, Jose? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a little mistake, but if you don't have it correct, the computer won't allow it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. So we're going to pause right there. Before we finish off the day, any questions on how to describe using uh, the nouns or using the verbs that we learned today? The, any questions about it? Not. No? No, teacher, thank you. Okay, good. So now we know that we can use past participles, we can use nouns, we can use different forms to describe different problems, right? Okay, so tell me about something in your house that maybe is not working correctly. Let's see if you learn how to describe it, how to use the vocabulary. Hmm. For example, yesterday in my house with the rain, because in my in my area, rain very hard. I saw the roof has a leak in it, and I need to put a tape. Hmm. What about in your house? How hmm. is the, how is the paint? The paint is good, or it it is cracked, or or maybe another maybe the floor, maybe the kitchen. Tell me. Teacher, in yes. my case, in my case, yesterday uh, for the storm, um, the, uh, the light, the light off in my neighbor too. Okay, good. One hour, one hour. Okay. Yesterday, the last night. Perfect. This is called a blackout. So, in in your case, Santiago. In my neighborhood, we had a blackout. Okay. This means no electricity. Blackout. Blackout. It's in the chat. It's in the chat. Good. Anybody else? Mm. Uh -huh. um, how we can say uh, drenaje? Drenaje. Raquel, how do we say drenaje? Blood water. Repeat, Emerson. It's no blood water. Blood water? No, but I like the idea. It sounds very. I was negras. Huh? Ah, no. Uh, those are sewers. Sewers. Sewers, correct. Sewers. Sewers. Hmm. Go ahead, Jose. Uh, yeah, and um, the sewers are um, blocked. Correct, with ED, exactly. So now we know different ways to explain problems. Is, has, or there is and there are. Tomorrow, we are going to continue with our platform. Remember to please complete the sentences in 1.1. I check again, no sentence, no sentence. So complete your six sentences. And tomorrow we continue with 1.5. Tomorrow it keeps burning. We are going to begin. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for connecting. Again, my name is Edwin and I will see you tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Tomorrow. Thank you tomorrow. tomorrow, guys. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night. Bye-bye.